Um, thank you, Ariana, for that very, very kind uh, introduction. And thank you to Hubert uh, and Steffi for having us here again at DLD. It always feels wonderful to be here. It's like coming home. Uh, Munich has become one of our favorite cities, and, and uh, we, we love being here, so thank you. Um, for those of you that don't know Jawbone, um, we are now the number one independent hardware software services and data company in the world. Um, and our mission is to bring incredibly crafted technology, make that technology that's very complex, beautiful, and build beautiful experiences around it. And ultimately, we feel like we're in service of giving you a better life, of making your life better across all aspects of it. I want to talk to you a little bit about the Internet of Things. We've obviously been hearing a lot about it at this show, a lot about it over the last few months and years. Ultimately, we actually believe that the Internet of Things is a mess and is in a desperate need of an organizing principle where all of these things are smart and connected. And we do actually believe that it can be organized in a way that makes sense, but it has to ultimately be organized around you. And what we believe is that your thermostat, for example, should know, A, who you are, B, are you hot or you're cold? Today it doesn't know that, no matter how smart it is. It doesn't know if you're hot or cold. It doesn't know if you're hot because you're sick, you're hot because you went for a run, or you're hot because simply it's hot outside. And it should know all those things, and each of those things should trigger a different response. Your car should know if you're tired, are you alert enough, right? It should know, are you aware of what's happening? Did you have enough sleep? And it should react to all of those things. So we think ultimately the role of wearables, which is another topic that people have been talking about a lot lately, is to make all of those things in the Internet of Things aware and smart and work to power that, to make those things intelligent. So what we believe is that we're in a transition now from the Internet of Things to the Internet of You. And that's ultimately where this all ends up, is that it's an Internet of You that is in service of making your life better. Right? So for us, it starts with making this beautiful hardware that will engage users, that will pull them in to a software and services ecosystem where all of this kind of comes together and you can start to build really interesting experiences for people, right? So I want to take a minute and talk about this notion that we spend a lot of time on at Jawbone around this notion of 24-hour wearability. So another category of wearables that's gotten a lot of attention is smart glasses. And if you think about smart glasses, that's certainly not a product that you would wear all the time, right? Either there's social connotations where it's a bit awkward, you can't wear it, or it, you need to recharge it. You certainly aren't going to wear it to sleep, right? So it's only relevant to you in a certain part of your day. If you think of some of the other fitness trackers that are out there, right? They're either too big, not cool enough, uncomfortable to wear all the time. They're not designed from a battery perspective or any of these things to be with you all the time. So you don't track your sleep. So what we really tried to focus on with UP was take all of this sort of very complex science and technology, integrate it in a form that was comfortable, easy to wear, where the technology is ultimately invisible. And the mission was to get 24 hours of engagement a day. And we are seeing that. I'm pleased to report that that's paying off for us, right? We have now nearly 24 hours of engagement a day. The only time people are taking it off is to charge it once a week. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty amazing when you, when you get that. So what does 24 hours of engagement do? What does that look like? What does that mean? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what happens. So this is a chart. So for the first time ever, I'm gonna show you with this data the difference between the mobile internet and what happens with the internet of you. So this is a, a study published by a company called Flurry that tracks mobile application utilization, right? So the x-axis is retention of these mobile apps over 90 days. The y-axis is how many times per week somebody uses these applications, so measured by opens. So you can see communications and news are way ahead of the pack, right? These are the things that people engage with, that they stay with, that they use all the time. So we looked it up against the same measurements. And the data kind of astounded us, right? We're seeing over 81% retention over 90 days. And we're seeing people engage 20 times a week and use this application. It blew us away. Right? And so to the point that Ariana was making, when you start to get this kind of stickiness and this kind of, of usage, you can start to make interesting changes in people's lives. You can start to influence how they live and, and make them live better. So it's been great for us. So what does all of that 24-7 engagement do? We think we're building the most contextualized 24-7 personalized data set 
around you that's never been assembled before. We have biometric information correlated to your activities, correlated to who you are, and how that relates to the environment over time, right? And again, that's never been done before. So we're collecting and, and putting all of this data together. We have nearly a trillion steps in our system today, a trillion steps. We have all of the associated calories, all of the associated movement information. Are you sitting? Are you standing? How fast you're moving? We have the world's largest sleep study ever conducted, 160 millennia, again, 160 millennia of human sleep data. We've been able to figure out that definitively men sleep 20 minutes less on average than women across all ages, across all demographics, across all geographies, right? We've been able to figure out what the ideal BMI is for, uh, for a user based on how they sleep and how that correlates to deep sleep. It's astounding what all this information does and what you can do. And again, what we think is, where does this go? What is it, what is it gonna do for you? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about where this goes, right? So what we're seeing and, and where the future is for us is that we're gonna connect up to your music system and we're gonna be able to tell you that you move a lot more when you listen to this kind of music. It makes you move faster, right? These are the insights that we're building in our system today, right? When you connect up to your television, I can tell you that if you watch Game of Thrones at 10 p.m. on a Sunday, you don't get enough restful sleep. Maybe you should watch it at a different time. Or when you watch this other show, it actually relaxes you and you get a lot more restful sleep, right? And the one that's really fun for me is connecting it to your thermostat. Tony's a very good friend of ours. But when you connect it to the thermostat, I can tell you that, hey, you know what? The ideal temperature for when you go to bed is actually lower than what your, thermo your thermostat is set at. Let's lower to that, help you fall asleep quickly, and then we'll bring you up um, at the right time so that you stay in deep sleep as comfortably as you possibly can. Right? And ultimately, we think it can do fun things, like tell your drone... When you're, when you're ready for your next bottle and you can, of, of water and you can schedule that delivery. So that's, that's, that's how this all comes together. Again, we think the role of the wearable is to provide that intelligence, that context into the Internet of Things so you can start controlling all of the stuff in your life around you. So thank you very much.